You know, this beautiful gospel this morning um, is an example of what happens when we have preconceived ideas of what life should be like. So Clopas and his companion were feeling this way as they traveled to Emmaus to get away from Jerusalem following the crucifixion of Jesus. And their hopes and their dreams of a Messiah had been shattered by the events of what happened in Jerusalem. Jesus had been their hope. He was to be the one to rescue them from the oppression of the Roman rule and from the sin and false worship of their people. He was the one. But they did not understand. Clopas knew we heard that, that this Jesus was, was a mighty prophet in word and deed. He was handed over to a sentence of death and crucifixion. We are hoping that he would be the one, they said. Jesus had raised all their hopes, and now his death had shattered them. And now even, you know, there was, they were talking about the vision of angels declaring that Jesus was alive. That wasn't even enough to keep them in Jerusalem with this community. Even that did not bolster their faith. They were blinded by their disappointment. You know, they demonstrate in some way, I think, a truism of, li of a life of faith. It's not enough to know what Jesus said and did. One must come to believe. You know, all the catechesis or, or data in the world will not do us a bit of good with, you know, without believing in. Faith is not a conceptual knowledge or data about Jesus, but it's a lived experience. It's a lived experience. Think of all who have spent years in religious education, right? Catholic schools, Catholic colleges, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and no longer step foot in a church. Think about that. So it's not about information, the conceptual knowledge or data about Jesus. It's about a personal lived experience of him. It comes down to having the key, if you will, the key to open up the mystery of Jesus' life. And this is where Clopas and his companion were, were challenged. Life was not as they expected. They did not have the key which opens the mystery that provides all the answers. They had information, but they did not have the key. They knew the scriptures, but they didn't get it. They had a conceptual knowledge of the happenings of Jesus, but they couldn't quite put it all together. So what is the key? What is the key? The whole of Christianity hangs on this. The key is this. God's self-emptying love and his desire to share it with us. That's the key. Yes, a love even to death. That is the key. God's act of taking upon himself the sins of the world, your sins and my sins, through the suffering love of the Son of God offered in sacrifice on the cross. This is the key to understanding the whole of Jesus' life and saying yes to this relationship every day. You know, Jesus walked with them and he stayed with them. He opened up the Old Testament scriptures for them, revealing the meaning of his life and his love. He broke bread with them in this personal, intimate encounter. And then, as Luke says, he opened their eyes. He opened their eyes and, and, and they recognized him. The, this opening, eye opening experience was meant to be an opportunity to physically see him or not to physically, it wasn't meant to, for them to physically see him, though that one hap that's what happened. What Luke really meant, that on a spiritual level came a deeper revelation. Once their eyes are open, that is once they understood what was being revealed to them in that Eucharistic encounter, their whole life changed. Not only did they recognize Jesus as the one whom they longed for, but they recognized him as the one whom they thought they had lost. The key was given to them. 
the key, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and he gave it to them. Jesus made present for them the depth of his love. His saving love in this Eucharist in which they experienced led them to believe that though they may, he may have left their sight, he was certainly did not leave their midst and that he was to remain with them through his word and sacrament in the breaking of the bread. Friends, each time if our hearts are open to this encounter with Jesus, we will experience God's act of taking upon himself the sins of the whole world through his suffering love of the Son of God offered in sacrifice on the cross. That is what is made present right here on this altar every time we gather for the Eucharist. And as he opens the word up to us, I mean, it can be, a, be the process by which the obstacles that prevent our eyes from seeing the resurrected Christ in our daily lives can be removed. I mean, how often do we find ourselves asking the question, well, where is God in all of this, right? I mean, even in the midst of this coronavirus, people are saying, where is God in all of this? Why is he letting all this happen? Why did he cause this, you know? Or people want why God seems to be absent. These perhaps are our roads to Emmaus. When these questions enter into our minds and our hearts, these perhaps are our roads to Emmaus. When we find ourselves in the midst, midst of life's disappointments, unable to see the Lord, it's not that he isn't there, it's that the eyes of our hearts are not opened to see. So the burning hearts of Clopas and his companion led them to see who was walking with them and they returned to Jerusalem changed, transformed with new clarity. And not only that now with a mission, satisfied and strengthened by his word and the Eucharist, these two disciples courageously headed back on the road to Jerusalem. They knew that the same forces that had killed their hope still existed there but everything else had changed. Now Jesus was alive with them and within them. They were resurrected in a sense. They were resurrected. Fear and disbelief and despair dissolved into faith, hope, love, and zeal. Now they were truly alive. So this Emmaus story is our story. It is our story. Here you and I, we ponder how Jesus, or how much Jesus not only wants to spend time with us, but desires, deeply desires, to remain with us. Jesus gives us not just ordinary bread, but Jesus gives us his very self. And deep down in that mysterious place of our heart, then we too are nourished and strengthened with food for this journey of life. All we need is to be open and empty and hungry, our hearts burning to receive the good news of his salvation so that you and I, we may experience his life in abundance.